Hello dear students, you all are welcome. So students, if we talk about the human body, that is the very unique thing about the human body that in our human body there is an organ which keeps on working without getting fatigue or without stopping for a particular minute and that is our heart. Okay. So students, this is the topic that we are going to study in today's lecture that is we are going to learn about the structure and the function of the human heart certainly. Okay students, so if we talk about whenever in biology we study the structure of an organ, so we assume that somebody is standing in front of us like for example this is my right hand and this is my left hand. Okay, so I am assuming that somebody is standing in front of me and that is how I am going to study the particular sides. So, it would be vice versa because if somebody is standing in front of me, their right side would be this one and left would be this one. Okay, always do remember over here. Now, here the question comes, what is the exact size of the heart? So, students, although we can't say the exact size, but tentatively we can say that the human heart, it has the size which can be concluded like so if we talk about the length of the human heart. So, what is the length of the human heart? It is about 5 inches. Okay, talking about the thickness. Okay, so how much it is? It is about the 3.5 inches. Next, if we talk about the width, so how much it is? It is about 2.5 inches. Or in general, if we talk about the weight of a human heart, it is believed to be as tentatively 250 to 300 grams. Okay, okay. Now, Okay, Anjali is asking, ma'am, what is the size of my heart? So, Anjali, you can just simply guess it by doing an activity like so. Raise your hand like this, just move your thumb like so and just make up the clenched fist. So, this is the size of your heart, Anjali. Okay, I hope you have understood the same. Now, first of all, let's just talk about the heart structure or the external structure of the heart. So, we can say that our heart, it is the muscular cone shaped organ which is about the size of a clenched fist of the same person. So, where exactly it is located? Let us just understand the same. If we talk about our heart, it is located in the upper body or the chest area between the lungs where its broad base facing upward and backward. Now, where the base is, this one is to be called as the base. Okay, if you see it is facing upward and a little bit backward and narrow apex. Here we can see the apex which is quite narrow. So, where it is directed? It is directed downwards, forward and slightly towards the left. Okay, now students talking about the next thing that we need to discuss over here, our heart. It is well protected by the tough two-layered sac which is called as the pericardium. Now, what is the significance of this pericardium? This pericardium, it allows the frictionless movement of our heart and also it protects the heart from the shock. Okay. So, now let us see where they are located exactly. Here we have the transverse section of the heart. Okay. So, here we can see the outer pericardium as we have mentioned it is the two layered sac. Okay. So, outer pericardium is there. Next we have that is the inner pericardium. Okay students. Now, if we talk about the walls of heart. Okay. So, the walls of heart it includes the three. Okay. Let us see their location. It is going to be the first one the epicardium. What is this epicardium? It is the outer one. Okay, and it is made up of the squamous epithelial cells. Next, if we talk about the middle one is going to be the myocardium, which is made up of the muscular tissue or the cardiac muscles, we can say. So, this is to be the middle one. Okay, let us see its location. Here it is. Okay, now talking about the next one, the last one or the innermost one, it is going to be the endocardium. So, this is going to be the inner one. Understood all of you? Okay. So, this is how 
our heart is well protected so this was all about the external structure now what about the internal structure that is very interesting okay let's see that okay so talking about the internal structure first of all we are going to learn about the chambers of heart how many chambers are there we can conclude that there are about four chambers okay so what they are exactly let's locate them this is going to be the right atrium next one is going to be the left atrium now if we see the upper two smaller ones they are to be called as the atrium okay next if we talk about it is going to be the right ventricle next we have it is going to be the left ventricle now do remember this is my right hand and this is my left hand so i am just assuming that somebody is standing in front of me and that is how i am referring to the particular sides or the parts of the heart over here or the chambers we can say okay now just note down one thing that in the atrium here if you see let's use other color as well here if you see this white color which i am depicting over here this is just depicting the thin wall of atrium okay next if you see this is ventricles they are having quite thick wall what is this this is quite thick as compared to the atria okay yes arun i know about your curiosity i know that somebody is going to ask me such question now why is it so this is going to have the thin wall just because it is having the function of only receiving the blood while if we talk about the ventricle the left ventricle that we see over here it is going to have the thick wall because its function is to pump out the blood okay students now just note down our heart doesn't purifies the blood nor does it filters the blood its function is only to pump the blood okay students so now if we proceed on to the next thing that we need to see after this is why they are named so so we are going to discuss that why they are calling it as the atrium because the atrium it is the latin word which means the entrance hall okay so if you see this atrium it means the entrance hall atrium acts as the collecting chambers for the blood returning to the heart and they have the thin walls while if we talk about the ventricle so it is also a latin word which means in english as the little belly okay so their function is just simply to pump out the blood or we can say they are acting as the distributing channels for the blood reaching from the atria okay so they have the thick muscular walls for pumping the blood to longer distances now just note down why they have the thick wall for pumping the blood to the longer distances while these are having the thin walls because they need to pump the blood to adjacent chambers okay so that is how it is okay now okay muskan is asking ma'am how does our heart function well we will learn about that at the end of the lecture for sure okay now just note down that our heart it is divided into the separate right and the left section by the septum okay so let's locate those septum over here if we talk about this is going to be the inter atrial septum because it is separating the right atria with that of the left atrium okay next that we have over here in the list it is going to be the interventricular septum which is going to separate the ventricles right and the left ventricle also students we have the septum in order to separate the right atrium and the right ventricle as well which is called as the right av septum what is this av over here this av is representing the atrio ventricular word okay so it is right atrioventricular septum similarly we have the left atrioventricular septum in order to separate the left atrium with that of the left ventricle okay students so this is the uniqueness of the human heart because of the presence of the septum the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood they are well separated okay so this separate oxygenated and deoxygenated blood okay okay uh mohit i think so you have not attended our previous classes in which i have told you about oxygenated and deoxygenated blood oxygenated blood is the one which is rich in oxygen while the deoxygenated blood is the one which is rich in carbon dioxide okay now i hope 
you have understood the same now moving on to the next thing we need to discuss about the vessels of the heart okay so students exactly from where our chambers of the heart they are receiving the blood so students if we talk about it is the superior vena cava which is going to drain the deoxygenated blood into the right part of our heart that is the right atrium as well as the inferior vena cava is there which is going to drain the deoxygenated blood as well into the right atria okay so these are the two particular veins which are just pouring the blood into the right atria okay now if we talk about the another vessel that we need to discuss is belonging to this pulmonary trunk and that is going to be the pulmonary artery now if you remember it from the previous lecture where we learned that this pulmonary artery it is an exceptional artery okay uh, Ria, I told you this thing in the very previous lecture as well that why we are calling it as the artery although it is an exception although it is carrying the deoxygenated blood we are calling it as the artery because it is carrying the blood away from the heart that is why we are calling so okay next we have the pulmonary veins that exist over here okay students so if we talk about these pulmonary veins they are the exceptional one as well why so because they are going to carry the oxygenated blood towards the heart okay and that is why we are calling them as the veins okay so this was all about the vessels now the last one that we are left with is the aorta this is the one which is going to supply the oxygenated blood to the body parts okay so that they can utilize the same okay now as we are done with the vessels of the heart so now the next thing that we need to discuss over here it is going to be the walls okay students so if we talk about what is the importance of these walls well these walls they kind of prevent backflow of the blood because we know that the major function of our heart is to simply pump the blood okay so students in order to conduct the flow of the blood in a particular direction they are there to prevent the back flow of the blood so that it doesn't goes back okay yes 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 mohita we learned about it in the particular veins as well there also the walls were present okay so we can conclude the walls in the human heart can be classified as the atrioventricular walls means which are present between the atria and the ventricles so it is going to be the tricuspid valve where this tricuspid valve is present it is to be present between the right atria and right ventricle now how you are going to memorize the same that is it is going to be the tricuspid or the other one well students if we talk about the alphabets so we know that it is p q r s t so r and t they lie somewhat near to each other so r for right okay and t for tricuspid wall they are going to be the same okay now if we talk about the bicuspid valve so where it is going to be present it is going to be present between the left atria and left ventricle now the opposite of the same would be the bicuspid valve this bicuspid valve students it is also to be called as the mitral valve as well okay we can call it as the mitral valve now talking about the next one that we have the semilunar valves so it is going to be the first one the pulmonary valve which is present at the initial point of the pulmonary trunk because it is going to just allow the blood to flow into the pulmonary trunk so that it could reach to the pulmonary artery from the right ventricle okay next that we see over here the aortic valve so this is to be directing the blood flow towards the aorta from the particular left ventricle okay so now and as we are done with it so the next thing that we need to discuss is the valves location over here so here we can locate them the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve which are the atrioventricular valve okay students next that we have it is the semilunar valves which is going to be the aortic or the pulmonary valve now let's zoom into it here we can see the location of this tricuspid valve right atria and right ventricle is here okay and if you see the bicuspid valve very clearly so we can see the left atria and the left ventricle where the bicuspid valve is present similarly if we talk about the pulmonary valve so it is to be located at the initial point of this pulmonary trunk over here okay if we talk about this aortic valve so this is also present over here which is going to direct the blood flow towards the aorta okay so this was all about the structure of heart now we need to discuss about the function of the heart so let's move on to the next thing we need to 
talk about how does our heart work so we know that it is having these four chambers this is just the outline of the heart right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle okay so students we know that which walls are present we have discussed between the right atrium and right ventricle tricuspid left atrium and left ventricle bicuspid or the mitral wall so students from the right ventricle the blood it is going to be conducted by the pulmonary artery which sort of blood is it going to carry the deoxygenated blood Okay, and we know that in our lungs there is the structural unit that exists which is to be called as the alveoli. Okay, students, where the gaseous exchange occur. Okay, so by reaching the lungs, the blood gets oxygenated. Okay, so now this oxygenated blood it is to be brought by the pulmonary veins, and where they are going to pour the same, they are going to pour it into the left atria. Okay, from the left atria, it would be going to the left ventricle. Now, from the left ventricle, the blood would be going via aorta to the body parts. Which sort of blood is it? It is the oxygenated blood. Okay, now why they are going to the body parts? Because we know that all our body parts, they perform the process of respiration in order to produce the energy. And we know that as a result of respiration, what happens? The energy in the form of ATP is released as well as the carbon dioxide is formed. So now the blood would get deoxygenated obviously. Okay, so students, what is going to happen? Now the blood which is deoxygenated, it is to be brought by which one? It is to be brought by the vena cava, the superior and the inferior vena cava towards the right atria and again the same cycle goes on. Okay, students. So, this was all about the working of the heart. I hope you all have understood the topic really well. Thank you.